Hello, my name is Lance Williams. I'm glad to be back with you again. And today I'm going to continue talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or otherwise known as the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We talked last week. If you didn't watch that teaching, I encourage you to go back and watch it. And we're just going to continue where we left off. So we finished in uh, talking about Peter in Acts chapter 4. And I'm not going to go through this, but in Acts chapter 6, maybe it's 7. Acts chapter 7, yeah, Stephen was stoned, the disciple of Jesus. And as he was being stoned, it says he saw, the, he saw Jesus standing up at the right hand of God. And he said, Father, forgive them. And he was able to forgive them as he's getting stoned. He was empowered to forgive them. Why? Because he had been filled with the Holy Spirit. He had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And maybe somebody could do that apart from that. I don't know. But I just want to make the point that when you receive this experience, you'll be empowered to do things that you couldn't do before. It's a powerful experience. Well, let me just recap, just in case somebody hadn't, for those of you who hadn't seen last week's teaching, like I said, I encourage you to go back and watch it, but we've just been walking through, well, first we started in John chapter uh, 14, talking about that Jesus was leaving and he sent a, another helper, he sent a comforter, the spirit of truth, it says, whom the world cannot receive, but you, he will, uh, he's been with you, but he will soon be in you. And then we went through Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2, and Acts chapter 4, and was just showing about how Jesus, he said, go and wait in Jerusalem until you receive the Holy Spirit. And he said, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will, you will receive power to be a witness of Jesus to all the ends of the earth. So he told them, don't go do anything until you receive the power of the Holy Spirit, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they went and waited. But I want to tell you today that you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait to be filled with the Spirit. God has already poured out His Spirit. Now all you've got to do is receive it. That's good news. God has already done His part. Now it's just up to us to receive so then also we talked about Peter and how he denied Christ three times in the Gospels. Three times in one night. But after he received this, what, what I'm talking to you about today, after he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then he got up and he preached and 3,000 people were added to the Lord that day, added to the church. He was arrested and he told the governing officials, he said, the Christ whom you crucified whom you rejected and just spoke truth in their face with no fear. A boldness that he didn't have before. And so you can see through the scriptures, through the book of Acts, that after Peter got filled with the Holy Spirit, that not only him, but it talks about John and others, uh, the Apostle Paul, that they had a boldness that they didn't have before. And I was talking about how it's been the same with me. I used to be really shy. I used to be a drug addict. I used to be a lot of things. But after receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I've been totally set free. I'm not fearful of what people think about me anymore. I'm not terrified to offend people. I'm walking in health to a greater degree. I'm walking in freedom to a greater degree. I walk free from addiction. And now I'm able to not only walk that out myself, but also to minister that to others because of this experience that I'm talking to you about. And we also talked about, it says in the book of Acts, that this is the promise from the Father. So this is a promise. Don't you want everything that God has for you? Do you only want to receive part of what God has for you and tell God no and the rest? Or do you want to receive everything that God has for you? then this is certainly part of what he has for you. 
So in Acts chapter 8, starting in verse 5, it says, Philip went down to the city of Samaria, Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. So he went down there and he preached Christ. And it said many, many powerful things happened. I mean, uh, deliverance, healings. Let's see. So jump down to verse 14. It says, Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, and Peter talks about receiving the implanted word, the implanted word, the incorruptible seed, that it's able to save your soul. And it says here, they received the word of God. They received, when, when Christ was being preached to them, they received it. And it says in verse 16, but that they had been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So they had been saved. So let's read back through this. Now the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God. They sent to them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not yet fallen on any of them, but, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. They had already been saved. They had already received the Word, received Christ, been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. But now, in Acts chapter 8, they're receiving the Holy Spirit. It is a separate experience. It's a separate experience from salvation. Now, somebody can receive salvation, and then in the same, the same moment, so to speak, in the same time period, they can receive the Holy Spirit, but they must first receive salvation. Salvation is the only prerequisite to receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And for those of you who didn't see last week, I was talking about what does the word baptism mean? It means just to be immersed in. So when you're baptized in water, you're immersed in water, you're being identified with Christ and his, his death, burial, and resurrection. When you receive salvation, you're baptized into the body of Christ. But when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, you are now baptized into the Holy Spirit and fire, is what the scripture says. I was talking about it's, it's a totally different deal to just drink a sip of water and then to be immersed into a river. When you receive salvation... The Holy Spirit seals your spirit. He is now in you. The Spirit of Christ is in you. But it's a totally different deal for, for the Holy Spirit to be in you and then you be in the Holy Spirit. It's a separate experience. And that's what he's pointing out here. Let's go to Acts chapter 9. Let's talk about Paul. So Paul was killing Christians, murdering, enslaving putting people in prison, Christians. But he had an experience with Jesus. He had an encounter with Jesus. Let me see what verse I want to start, start in. Let's we'll start in verse 3. Now as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven showed, shone around him, and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? The scripture says, Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe Paul was saved right here. He said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. I love this because it shows Paul was persecuting Christians. And Jesus said, Here, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Jesus took it personal. That he was persecuting the church. I love that. Verse 6 says, But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. Verse 10. Acts 9, 10. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Rise and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas took, took, 
at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. Verse 17. So Ananias departed and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately, something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he arose and was baptized, and taking food, he was strengthened. So the Lord Jesus specifically sent Ananias to lay his hands on Paul, that Paul may be filled with the Holy Spirit. And Paul was a very bold man. Paul endured, thing that, endured things that most men wouldn't have endured because he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. And see, he had already called on the name of the Lord. I believe Paul was already saved. But now he was filled with the Holy Spirit. I know he was saved because the Bible teaches that you must be saved before receiving the Holy Spirit. See where I want to go from there. Give me just a second. So then in Acts chapter 10, Peter is preaching. Verse 44. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word, and the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and magnifying God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. Again, I just want to show you that it's a separate experience from salvation. Let's go to Acts chapter 19. This one for me made it most clear. This was the one that really made it clear to me that this is a separate experience and that we can have it. Acts chapter 19, verse 1, and it says, And it happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples, and he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So when you believed, when you believed on Jesus, when you received salvation, did you receive the Holy Spirit? And they said, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And Paul said, Into what then were you baptized? They said, Into John's baptism. This is talking about water baptism. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is Jesus. So people repented, and they were water baptized. It talks about in the Gospels about John baptizing multitudes in water. And so they repented. That's a baptism of repentance. Verse 5, On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. 
a separate experience. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They received the Holy Spirit. And the initial sign after that, they spoke in tongues and they prophesied. That's awesome. And I'm telling you folks, since I've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'm, I've not been the same. I've not been the same at all. Because of, of this experience, when I get up to speak, I'm not saying I'm the best speaker, nothing like that, but I can speak with authority. I can speak with a boldness. I can speak up in the face of lies and in the face of God haters because I'm empowered by the Spirit. I'm healthier than I've ever been. I walk in more freedom than I've ever walked in. I'm able to believe God to a greater degree because this, the baptism of the Holy Spirit has helped me. It's, it's, I'm trying to think how to explain it, but the nature of Christ that's on the inside of me, receiving the Holy Spirit has helped me to live out that nature, to walk out that nature of Christ in me. Do I do it perfectly? No. But I do it a lot better now than I ever have before. I do it a lot better now than before I received this experience. God wants you to have this experience. He wants it for you more than you want it. And now it's just up to you to receive it. So how do we do that? Well, let's go to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. I'm going to start in verse 9. And I will tell you, this is Jesus speaking, and I will tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Now, I believe God has made me righteous. If we've received Him, God has made us righteous. But apart from God, in light of God, we are, we are wicked. We're evil. Again, apart from God, our flesh is wicked. Now, praise God that I'm not without God. I'm righteous. I'm holy. But my flesh, apart from God, is wicked and evil. And he says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts, then how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? There can be multiple ways to receive the Holy Spirit. One of them, as we've read in Acts, is just the laying on of hands. Another, Peter was preaching and the Holy Spirit just fell. But the way I received the Holy Spirit was the laying on of hands. And I just received it. I received it just like I did salvation. Just like when I received Jesus and I asked Jesus into my heart. And I said, Father, I, I have sinned. I receive you as Lord and Savior in my life right now in Jesus' name. That's all I did with the Holy Spirit. I had someone lay hands on me. A pastor actually called for salvation and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I went up there. He laid hands on me. And I said, Father, I receive the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And I received my prayer language talking about tongues. I said, thank you for filling me with the Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving me my prayer language and helping me speak in tongues in Jesus' name. And after that... After that, I actually, I was still smoking cigarettes at the time, and, but since I received that, I've been cleaned up from that. But I went outside and I started smoking a cigarette, and I remember, literally, the trees got a little greener, the sky got a little bluer. It's like a slight fog was lifted off me. I could physically, like, see a little clearer. And then even much more so, 
my 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 mental faculties was were more clear. My I could see spiritually. I could see things in the Word that I just couldn't see before. I developed a love for the Word that I didn't have before. Now I crave the Word just like we crave food. I have a love relationship with the Lord, with the Word of God. Now I loved the Lord before, but I, I, I did not love His Word like I do now. Not saying I didn't love His Word, but not like I do now. I can love people to a greater degree now. I have a greater capacity to love people because of this experience. And I remember, it's like things literally had a more color to them. And I didn't pray in tongues right then. But later on, I was talking to some friends of mine. I, was, I said, I've received. I just, I hadn't prayed in tongues yet. And we're going to talk about tongues in the future lessons, probably next week. But a group of guys, they circled around me and prayed for me in a Walmart parking lot. And they just started praying in tongues. And I just jumped in and started praying with them. And I've been praying in tongues most every day since then. And it has radically transformed my life. And it can be the same for you. You can have this. It's a promise from the Father. He wants you to have it. He wants you to be empowered to be His witness. And you can't be a witness. You can't be a witness to the, to the degree that He wants you to be apart from this experience. You might can be a, somewhat of a witness to Jesus before, but when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are empowered to be a witness. That is the purpose of this promise from the Father. And you can have it. So right now, if you want this, then I just encourage you to, to pray with me. And just do something along the lines of what I'm doing. Father, I, if you haven't, I'm going to pray for people who hadn't been saved either. And so you just do something. You don't have to do exactly what I do, but something along these lines. Lord Jesus, I have sinned. I need a Savior. And right now I receive you as my Savior. And not only my Savior, but I receive you as my Lord and as my Master. In Jesus' name, thank you for dwelling in me, Lord Jesus. And right now, Lord, I receive the Holy Spirit. Baptize me in fire right now. I receive the Holy Spirit. I receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and I receive my prayer language. Thank you for filling me with the Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving me my prayer language and helping me to speak in tongues. And most of all, thank you for empowering me now to be a witness of the Lord Jesus and to live in power and to minister in power in Jesus' name. And if you've done that, congratulations. You have been saved or you have been filled with the Holy Spirit. And now I just encourage you to find someone. Find someone who prays in tongues. We can just pray in tongues now. I'll just pray in tongues just for... I, use, I normally don't do it in front of people because I don't want to do it for show or anything like that. But for those of you who have received the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'm just going to start praying in tongues right now. Barono sokiva na mausta, bakuli anama esika rabakuta yashta ba eli anamaso. Pray with me. Pray in tongues with me. Sekuli anama usta marono sokila mana asiala. Quit judging and jump in there and pray with me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I encourage you. Find somebody that prays in tongues. Have them lay hands on you and just have them pray in tongues with you. Praying in tongues with somebody else can really help you. Because sometimes it's hard. It's hard to just make that step. Because you don't know what to say. You feel stupid. You feel, feel embarrassed. But find a group of people. For me, it was... The first time, one person tried to pray with me, and I, I felt a little embarrassed. But when a group of people 
were with me and I, I prayed with them and they couldn't hear what I was saying because everybody else was praying. That really helped take the pressure off and helped me to pray in tongues. And if you're confused about that, if you have questions about that, we're going to talk about tongues in the future weeks. But don't judge it negatively just because you don't understand it. Because I did that at one time. And I tell you what, I was missing out. But praise God, I humbled myself and I received. And I'm believing that you have or that you will too. All right, well, God bless you.